but what's the difference at this time of year? You know, it's draft time. How do you feel like your whole structure changes or you changed? This is the busiest time of year. The uh, end of the year is always the busiest time of the year. Beginning of the next year is always the busiest time of the year because you've got all the fights that are happening. And at the same time, all the, uh, the uh, recruiting comes to a headway at this time. Kids declare from college and then boom, all of a sudden, either you're signing them or you're not. And this is the time that this is happening. And then once they sign with you, which is usually between some point in the end of November through the beginning of January, you, that's when all the training, all that stuff comes. So you're responsible for a lot of things that are going on. A lot of players sign with FRM because we tell the truth. I think the biggest thing that we do is just we don't sugarcoat things. Um, there's no BS. There's no nonsense. I do things completely different from all the other agents. And I think that's what allows us to separate ourselves from everyone else. I saw you on the phone earlier. You were talking to you know, a player. Is that, is that, is that, your, that you think the biggest difference, the fact that you motivate them, or the fact that you guys have a plan, have a map? I think the biggest difference is that we definitely have a plan, and we expect the guys to execute that plan. But my job is to motivate when necessary. My job is to clarify when necessary. My job is to help guide a kid through this stressful time. It's a very stressful time for them. Uh, you know, I try, to, I try to treat players like grown men. I want them to understand that just because they're younger or that because they're just leaving college, they got decisions to make, and they have to make them as grown men. Um, and I try my best to show them what their options are and why one might be right versus another and why that one might be right versus the other one. And it's important for, for young men to understand what they're dealing with. And if they understand that, then whatever decision they make is probably the right decision for them at that moment. I don't, I don't care about the deals I've done in the past. When I talk to a kid, I try to focus on him. What I've done in the past means nothing but to that person that I did the deal for. When I talk to a kid, I try to do the deal for him and I try to put a plan together for him that's different than what it might have been for somebody else or for someone else that I may have at the same time. You, have you seen a change ever, you know, people do see these things, they're on TV, they're everywhere. Do you, do you feel like there's a change now ever since, you know, these deals have been done? Oh, I mean, listen, absolutely. You know, when you, when you start, you know, excelling in anything, whether you do a big deal in this business or, you know, you win an Emmy as a cameraman, right? I don't know if that's an Emmy or whatever, but like let's say as a producer, you win a Grammy or whatever it is that you guys win as a, as a, as a musician. Um, I think absolutely, I think people look at you different. People take you a little bit more serious. People say, okay, wait, that's the guy that did that. And I think that, but I, like I said, I don't really, like I don't, you know, every player, every athlete has their route, their role. My job is to help guide that person. What works for this guy may not work for this guy. So I try not to take the successes and say, oh, look at me, I did this. Therefore, you should, you know, come with us. But what I do say is like, look, I did this. And I did this and I, and I, I had a strategy that worked. So when I put pl things in place, I want you to trust it. And hopefully you will, and then you'll execute on the plans that we put together. You're talking to the phone a minute ago, actually, about like the training, the this that goes out. I think a lot of people don't understand that. Can you talk about that in the sense of like you, what you guys really do? I think people think the draft is just somebody just shows up and they get drafted. The reality is you guys help them to the process. Can you tell us about some of those successes? Can you tell us about some guys that were maybe going six, went to round two? Or... I mean, one of my favorite ones is the Titus Howard story where when he was coming out, a lot of people had him as a late round developmental type guy that would, you know, they all said he'll play for a long time in the league, but... No one expected him to go in the first round. And it was funny because I told him he'd be a first-round pick. And I just put him through the process, and he ended up being a first-round pick. I was the only person that said that <clears throat> throughout the whole entire process. No one knew who he was. And he excelled so much at a premium position that, you know, the team came and got him. And I think that that's what this whole process is about. I mean, I think you were talking about James Houston. Tell us a little about that story. I mean, James, the James Houston story was an interesting one because he was a kid that excelled on the field um, at Jackson State and HBCU. Um, and prior to that, he was at the University of Florida, but he didn't really have a great career at University of Florida. At Jackson State, he turned it up and, and just played a new position and was really well, really good at it. Had a lot of doubts, a lot of fear, and we just, you know, we guided him through the process and he put in a lot of work. That kid, I mean, he worked his ass off and it ended up working out. He got drafted and, you know, that was the, the high, and then the valley came, you know, the low, um, when he got cut, was on practice squad. I think mentally he wasn't in a good place, you know what I'm saying, after that. He'd never been cut in his whole life. Um, and then he went to work, and, you know, after he got over being cut, he went to work. And as he was working, he started getting really good at it. And then they activated him at Thanksgiving 2022, and he went, they gave him five reps, and he got two sacks in those five reps. And he set a rookie record for the most sacks for somebody... Um, in their first six games and stuff. So, uh, you, you know, James Houston's star is very bright. 
And how about uh, you taking players from HBCU, from smaller schools? I know there's been a lot that you've done there. Can you tell us a little bit about the successes you had in that state? Yeah, I mean, it's just the same thing. It doesn't matter where you come from. If you really like that, they'll, they will make it work. I mean, they'll, they'll come find you. So my job is, you know, whether you're HBCU, FBS, small school, big school, it doesn't really matter. It's all the same. It's just you have to individualize it for each person. What can you tell, I mean, what's the difference making thing when you talk to a player? Like, what do you know you want to take him as a client? Or what, what's kind of motivates you? You know, you look for a guy that's, that, that is grounded. You want somebody that doesn't fall for the hype. You want somebody that really like wants to build a relationship and that values relationship. And if you have that, you're, you have everything. I think a lot of people, you know, it's funny because I think a lot of guys think that agents have all this power and that they're just able to make a phone call and sell, you know, a guy to somebody. And, and the truth is it's not like that at all. And so when you start to break down how the system works, a lot of the kids just start to realize, wait a minute, it doesn't matter who I sign with, this is based on me. And when they figure that part out, it usually becomes a lot easier. And how about the combine? You know, obviously people outside looking in, it's like the combine, the combine, the combine. So what's the reality of the combine? The reality of the combine is that it's a super important event to show how much of an athlete you are. It doesn't determine how good of a football player you are, but it determines how well of an athlete you are. The best football players that are the best athletes get drafted the highest. That's probably the reality of the combine. So how does someone like, I think you, t- I think you were talking about earlier, like someone didn't go to a combine, did get drafted. How does that happen? Well, because then they have a pro day, which is similar to the combine, it's just at their school. And if they go there because they didn't get invited to the other one, and the scouts come and they watch them, and they get good times on them, chances are our kids will get drafted. And so how, how, how do you, you know, I'm sure maybe someone will watch this and they want to talk to FRM or get to know FRM. What will you tell them? If you want the truth, if you want the absolute truth, Someone's going to really give you the raw of what it is and what your situation is, I'm your guy. But if you can't handle the truth, don't, don't call me because you're going to hate me after I'm done. Listen, we're, we're, we're a boutique-style agency where we care about the personal touch when it comes to our clients. In other words, we want to be there for them. We want to try to build a relationship with them. I don't want 100 clients. It's not the business that I want to build. I like my book of business. I like the guys I have. I want to be able to work in their lives every day and work with them. And then I want to be, have my own life. Because when you have a lot of, when you have 100 guys, you know, things at home suffer. So for me, it's very important to have a good group of guys that I can take care of, that I can call, you know, friends or, or, and hopefully become family with.